Okay, happy Wednesday morning to you all. It is uh, January 4th, I think. January 4th, 5th, 4th, yeah. Uh, headed out for a work commute on the Riker and uh, getting leaves and chunks thrown at me by the uh, weed eaters and uh, <laughs> leaf blowers out here. Uh, brought the uh, Riker home from the warehouse a few days ago. Uh, was it New Year's Day or something like that? Get it out for a little bit of exercise, uh, keep everything from going stale in it, from sitting too long. It's been a few months. Uh, <laughs> a leaf storm. Um, temperature's really good today. We had crap weather for about, oh, I don't know, two or three weeks with that cyclone, the winter storm that rolled through the whole U.S. Uh, we were under freezing here uh, for five or six days in a row, I think it was. It was pretty unusual for Houston. But we didn't have any real severe weather that came with it. It was just, you know, cold, kind of rainy, crappy. Uh, no, pers no real precipitation, nothing frozen, so that was good. But uh, it was cold enough that all the uh, leaves on the bushes and the trees and stuff like that are falling in a very rapid fashion all of a sudden. They just gave up. The cold was too much. They quit. Anywho, so I got the Riker back out, just uh, circulating the fluids and putting some miles on it. Uh, I've done a couple of uh, work commutes with it uh, back and forth the last few days and I just haven't gotten back into my vlogging routine. Uh, I haven't done any vlogs in a while so I went looking for my gear and couldn't find some of it and, and I'm running into GoPro uh, camera and battery issues and all kinds of stuff so who knows if this uh, recording is even going to make it. I started doing a vlog a couple days ago on, uh, what was it, uh, I think it was on the Navi. And I got like just outside the neighborhood here, and the camera crooked. I said, uh -uh, I give up. And that was with a full battery. I don't know. I give up. I'm thinking about switching over to a DJI, what is it, the uh, Osmo 3 or whatever it's called. Uh, it might be a little bit better of an action camera. We'll find out. Uh, haven't gotten my GoPro 360 back yet. Uh, I still need to follow up with. Uh, GoPro support and find out what happened to that. I sent it in to them and I got a, an acknowledgement that they received it and then I heard nothing after that and I still haven't gotten my camera back. So I would like to have my uh, $400 or $500 uh, GoPro uh, Max back. Uh, I'm thinking about getting the, what is it, the uh, OnePlus uh, 2 or 3 or whatever, the newest version of the little uh, OnePlus. 360 camera because it's much smaller format. Uh, the only thing I worry about on it is the uh, battery life because I don't think you can hook up an external power source to it while you're recording. That's one thing I like about the uh, the Max camera is you can power it with USB and keep recording. So I don't know. Anywho, that's uh, a nice red dude. Um, that's the state of uh, technical and camera affairs on the Riker front. I'll, I'm probably still going to get rid of it this spring sometime, but I'll wait until riding season is more into full swing uh, when people are more eager to buy. That way I don't take such a hit on the uh, resale price. Uh, and the second reason that I'm hanging on to it for a little bit yet is uh, rolling on three. Keith up there in uh, New York was mentioning that there is a huge three-wheel meetup uh, here in the uh, Houston or Texas area somewhere. I think it's in the Houston area. Uh, and that's coming up in the March time frame. So I'm definitely going to try to attend that if I can. <laughs> From what I heard, it's going to be uh, a thousand or more bikes. That's crazy, man. They're going to have three-wheelers of all flavors, apparently. You know, slingshots and you name it. So that'll be kind of cool to go hang out. I won't get rambunctious like a lot of those big meats uh, tend to do. <laughs> I'm just there to spectate. But I'll ride over there on this. Uh, I was also thinking about taking this thing out uh, for a uh, winter hammock camping adventure like I did a couple years ago to the, uh, what was it, Lake Livingston or something like that, uh, where I did the Texas hammock hangers fall gathering. Uh, that was November time frame a couple of years ago though, so this is uh, too too late in that season, too early in this season uh, for that, but the weather is still plenty cold and 
I do like getting out and uh, kind of suffering a bit in the cold weather uh, doing hammock camping. It's an interesting challenge, you know, you got to take the right equipment, the right uh, insulation, you know, over quilt, under quilt, all that kind of stuff. Winter barrier uh, for the hammock sometimes to keep the wind from sucking all the heat out of you. It's an interesting challenge, it's fun. Uh, so I might do that on this. Uh, if the weather doesn't continue uh, its cold spell and warms up like we typically are, then uh, I might go do a uh, winter beach camping thing down in uh, Galveston or Matagorda or hell, I don't know, maybe even uh, Corpus or North Padre area, something like that. Ride this thing down there and go camp on the beach for a couple days. I would sooner take this thing on the, the sandy beaches than I would uh, a little Navi or one of the mini motos. <laughs> I don't think they would make it. they would probably just sink in the sand and I'd end up pushing it and walking it out of there. I wouldn't want to push or walk this thing out. I don't think that can be done. Weight and footprint are not really conducive to pushing this thing very far. So, I might have a few more uh, fun miles to do, uh, trips and entertainment with the Riker. But I think I'm ready to move on and get something different. I'll probably get the F3S if I stay in the uh, Riker, you know, rever or sorry, the uh, reverse track platform, the in the Can-Am platform. Uh, I'm not real happy with their warranty support and recall support and just overall customer experience in my uh, ownership of this machine. So, I don't know if I'll delve back into the Can-Am realm or not, or just uh, sidestep it and go a different way. I've been thinking about changing gears a little bit uh, as far as uh, my hobbies and ride content and all that. Uh, I'll, I'm always going to be doing motorcycle stuff. It's in my blood, you know, it's, it's an infection. But uh, I'm thinking about getting back into cars a little bit. Uh, I got out of cars 20 some years ago when I got married and started having kids because you know it's an extremely expensive hobby. <laughs> you can't get uh, a decent sports car and go have fun these days for less than you know 30 or 40 grand it seems like uh, and anytime you want to upgrade it it's much more expensive. Anytime you work on it it's much more expensive. If you break it or blow it up it's a whole lot more expensive than motorcycles. So um, I'll probably uh, get into you know, a little convertible or something and just get back to going out and having some solo fun uh, sport car you know convertible camping stuff like that still minimalist challenge so it's almost motorcycle-esque but not quite this last couple trips that I did up to the northeast this last fall uh, the uh, Blue Ridge and Shenandoah Skyway and all that really, really made me want to have a small convertible again. So I don't know if I'll get a Miata. God, look at this front wheel just blah, 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 out of balance. Oh, it pisses me off. Uh, I don't know if I'll get a Miata or maybe a, a few year used uh, little Cayman convertible, something like that, a little Cayman Spider. You can get those for decent prices, you know, 20s in that price range. All right, and a few people. I want out, I ain't asking. Uh, yeah, I get one that's certified pre owned with a handful of years on it and, you know, under 50,000 miles or something like that. Uh, I think that'd be a pretty reliable car. They've got good maintenance histories. You can pick them up for 25, 30 grand, something like that. Uh, I'd like to keep it cheaper, you know, in the sub-20 range if possible, so that's why I was thinking about a, an NC or ND uh, Miata. I don't know. It's just uh, a change of pace, different hobbies. Maybe reach out to a broader audience on YouTube. Of course, I'm not doing it for YouTube. It's just, it seems like the, the YouTube algorithms don't really favor either me or my type of content. I don't know what it is. Uh, the kind of laid back touring lifestyle, small bore lifestyle, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's not really mainstream and 
I'm not one of those whiz bang creators that has all the fancy flashy graphics and that kind of stuff. So uh, the the fans of this kind of content, I do sincerely appreciate you uh, <laughs> watching and hanging in there. Uh, you guys are the true enthusiasts, you know, real motorcyclists, real uh, adventurers uh, that aren't just looking for that 30 second dopamine hit for some flashy graphic or some idiot stunting down the highway, standing on his seat, ghost riding at 100 miles an hour, you know, come on. That ain't me. I'm not going to do that. I don't care what ratings take. I won't do it. <laughs> So I'm going to try to kick off the Quasi Garage channel this year, uh, maybe in the next month or two, and uh, start doing some, you know, live, longer form uh, wrenching videos, stuff like that from my warehouse, and uh, that's where I'll probably kind of branch out a little bit into some of the automotive and truck and you know, other stuff besides just motorcycles. I've tried to keep all the content in this one motorcycle centric because you know quasi motard you know it's the more motorcycle lifestyle so anyway we'll see again it's still just a hobby i'm not not really approaching it as a business or a money maker but the the time involved in doing the video production and you know the editing and the publishing the content and all that it's uh it, it's pretty big investment time-wise so it gets to a point of diminishing returns if you're putting just scores and scores of hours into recording and editing a video and then the algorithms don't promote the content or whatever you're doing just isn't interesting to a wide enough audience to make it worthwhile so I have to kind of balance it out a little bit my wife and kids will be gone this uh, summer they're going to uh, Brazil. My son is going on his long overdue trip to Japan that we paid for three plus years ago. Uh, yeah, three, almost four years ago. Man, it's been a while. It was like a year before COVID and that got postponed or something. I don't know what the deal was. Anyway, so he's going to be in Japan for a couple of weeks. And then when he returns, he'll join the rest of them down in Brazil. And they're probably going to stay there for the whole summer and uh, just get a, I don't know, a little change of pace, get out of the States, live a slower, different lifestyle for a few months. It's good to have that outside perspective. A lot of people don't have that opportunity or that uh, financial capability to go live abroad uh, and get out of the United States uh, or just live in any other country in general. Uh, the, the change of culture and lifestyle differences are pretty drastic. Uh, it takes you a, a few weeks to really soak it in and acclimate it, but once you can start feeling that different vibe, uh, it, it's pretty enlightening. Most of the South American culture uh, is a lot more life-centric, family-centric. Uh, we're here in the U.S., we're totally work-centric. So we uh, we live to work. They work to live. Only what they need to do to, to get by and do what they need to do. So they're not as productive as we are as far as uh, overall, you know, gross domestic product, whatever you want to call it. But, I don't know, I think their, their quality of life is probably a little better than ours. Less stress, less nonsense, just more focused on uh, living and sharing time with people and family. We're so distant here in the U.S. Everyone is uh, very standoffish. You don't know, especially, well, particularly in large cities like this, you don't know your neighbors. Nobody... Uh, Nobody knows anybody. They don't want to know anybody. Where are you going, dumbass? Backing up in the right-of-way. What the f***? Anyway. Um, everybody just wants to hide out in their homes and not to, not rub elbows. And they don't like their neighbors because everybody's, you know, antagonistic and adversarial and all that. 
it's the complete opposite <laughs> down in Brazil. Doors are open, people come over and, you know, they'll knock on your door. Or they, they don't knock on doors, they clap outside. You know, they clap to get your attention to see if anybody's awake without really disturbing you. Uh, they'll come by at any hour, a day or night. And everybody just sits outside and talks and has coffee or beer or whatever. Just, you know, the human experience. Here we've, uh, I think as a culture, as a society, we've lost the family connection. And of course, I won't get into the politics of why that is. It's an entirely different dissertation. But uh, the uh, our culture here is more solo. Everything is solo. We want to be alone. We want to be, uh, you know, far apart from everybody else. We don't want to be uh, inconvenienced by friends or family or anything. We want to be uh, in our own little units. That's it. And uh, that's a shame because, you know, in South America and places like that, they live in uh, family units uh, and you've got support nets around you. You know, if you've got two or three kids, you know, you can leave the kids with your in-laws or your, your parents that might just be next door or down the street or whatever. So family units are a lot tighter. Uh, here, it's the most common practice is the kids want to get out of the house and move to the opposite side of the country as quickly as possible. <laughs> I don't get that. I mean, I kind of felt that when I was young, but it was mainly where I lived that I didn't like. Uh, I didn't like Oklahoma. I wanted to get out of Oklahoma. So anyway, uh, maybe I'll pick up this conversation later. i got to go to work. <laughs> Rejoining your friend of the road, finished up my uh, morning appointment, and now I'm headed to a lunch meeting at a country club. I've been to this one before, but it's been a long time. Uh, man, I can't even remember. It's probably 15 years since I've been there. Rather high-end place. Very nice. A business meeting with a an old business acquaintance of mine on a new business project so <laughs> we'll see how it goes hopefully it works out uh, well for everyone involved and man i wish i had brought uh, one of my little lightweight hammocks my day hammocks uh, with me today because the weather is just absolutely phenomenal when i finish this uh, lunch meeting i might end up just going to uh, one of the parks and sitting and doing a little work or something I'm not sure It'd be nice to hang in some trees but probably just end up sitting at a park bench and relaxing soaking up some of this fantastic weather it's like 72 73 degrees out here right now pretty dry air feels so good it's about the only time Houston gets uh, clear dry weather is winter time <laughs> is this it I think this is it. I'm gonna find out. Yeah, this is it. Okay, so I'll find my spot and uh, check in with you all in just a little bit. I don't remember if this is the entrance for the clubhouse and restaurant or not. I think it is. Yeah, must be. Can't go that way. I'll figure it out. Looks like a good one right there. I gotta fix these rattles in this thing. It's this left side cover that's so, so noisy. Catch up with you guys after lunch, maybe from a park. We'll find out. 
Oh, oh my god, I am so full. That food was fantastic. Lunch meeting went well. It's uh, still working up toward a project. Uh, nothing's making money yet. Oh, but that lunch was good. That sandwich was incredible. And now I need a nap. <laughs> it's going to be hard to work the rest of the afternoon, man. I am sleepy. A couple glasses of iced tea, a glass of water, and uh, that massive plate of food. Onion rings, fries, and a uh, Greer cheese uh, spare rib sandwich. Oh my god, I'm full. Ugh. <laughs> All those bumps in the back hurt. Uh oh, now I'm gonna get wet. Tell ya, legs are getting wet. So, back to the warehouse. I'm gonna get some stuff down there, hopefully. Some paperwork I need to do. Uh, gotta look over a couple of contracts that need signed and sent out for uh, this job and one other. And uh, of course, while I'm at lunch, I got like, three phone calls and a dozen texts. So I need to figure out who is uh, blowing my phone up. Oh my God, I'm so full. I'm miserable. I'm like a puppy at the feeding bowl with a distended belly, whining that I'm hurting. Okay, well, I have arrived again. I'm going to uh, get a little bit of work done here at the warehouse and then uh, head home, hopefully before the uh, big traffic rush. All right, continuing my day. I just have to take a quick look at this wrap. I don't know if that comes out on camera, but that is so badass. They're doing a wrap on this uh, Camaro, and it's kind of a silver holographic. Man, that's cool. I'm going to have to ask him later what that uh, particular color is. That's awesome. Anyway, uh, swapped out the uh, Riker for the Rebel. I need to take the Rebel over for an oil change. Uh, probably go ahead and get the tires for it and fix this oil leak. Uh, it's not pissing on the ground yet, but it's leaving its mark all over my garage floor in the warehouse. Pretty much anywhere I leave it sitting, it drip, 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 drips. Uh, so up here at the front of the stator cover, there's a grommet uh, where some of the cabling comes out, and that's what's uh, that's where it's leaking. And then it's also leaking out the access hole here. So anyway, I'm going to see if uh, warranty covers that. I sure hope it does, because that's obviously a defect. Got uh, 10,000 miles and change on this thing now. Haven't even looked at the Odo. Haven't ridden it much since my last uh, road trip up there to the northeast. Definitely needs a tire soon. Let's see if I can pull up my uh, mileage stuff. Ten three twenty four on it, so ten thousand three twenty four miles. This tire still has some life left in the rear, but it's squared off pretty good. It needs help. It's getting down right to the bottom of the wear dots. Uh, I'll take a look at it before we drop this thing off for good. Um, last time I checked it, you yeah. know. 100 miles or so ago uh, it still had some room down to the bottom of the wear dots but that was about it uh, just barely so starting to look more like a car tire back there than a motorcycle tire a little on the square side Ugh. so i will uh it's hot i'll drop this off over at wild west out there in katie and have them uh, check this uh, stator cover leak uh, and see if it's a recall issue or if warranty just wants to take care of it. And that'll be a nice convenient timing to go ahead and do an oil change on it at the same time. 
and depending on their prices for the tires, uh, I plan to get the uh, Metzler Cruise Tex for this. Uh, if their prices are reasonable, then I'll just go ahead and order through the dealership and have them put a set of front and rear on here. I'll probably keep that front because it's still, you know, almost brand new. Uh, hardly has any wear on it at all, but uh, I'll keep it as a spare. Then uh, the rear will be destroyed, recyclicated. If their prices at uh, Wild West aren't decent enough, then uh, I'll probably order a set front and rear from uh, Cycle Gear. And uh, I'll just pull the wheels and uh, take them over there. And they'll do the mountain balance for, I think it's 20 bucks or 30 bucks a tire or something like that. And then I can add the... Uh, I can add the road hazard on there for a little bit more. I think it comes out to be around 40 bucks a tire or something like that. So that's not bad. Gives you a prorated warranty in case of, uh, you know, irreparable uh, damage. Which, in my book, any kind of puncture is pretty much irreparable uh, on a motorcycle tire, as far as I'm concerned. You can patch it and ride on it for a little while just to get you from here to there, but it's not a not a good idea to keep those things in service any longer than you need to. The only time when I've done it and uh, kept them, you know, in service for a while is when they were pretty much brand new when they took their first hit, uh, and then I'll have them pulled off of the rim and. I've never had a shop that will patch it for me, so I've always ended up doing it myself. And you put in those uh, patch plugs from the inside of the tire, and they usually do pretty good. I've gone another seven or 8,000 miles on those in the past, and the rest of the tire wore out before the patch did, so that was okay. I took my quad lock mounts off of here. I was just reaching in my pocket to make sure that my phone is really buried deeply in my back pocket. <laughs> Don't want that thing to go flying out of my pocket on the, on the highway, freeway at uh, 70 miles an hour. I'm, I'm sure it would not survive. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to get the new quad lock mag case uh, that's got the magnets built into it. That's pretty cool. I previously used the rock form cases and rock form was neat because it was a similar quad lug design uh, but it had a separate magnet that was below the uh, the locking ring uh, and it was just a really strong magnet and the idea was it would prevent the phone from rotating uh, while it was in the mount and those are okay on bicycles and stuff like that but uh, on motorcycles it's uh, a little bit more of a challenge because you've got so much more vibration and road shock and everything going on so anyway i uh moved over to these quad lock mounts and they're just fantastic but i miss those magnets in the case because in my line of work uh you know servers and networking and data centers and all the kind of stuff that i do it's so convenient to just take your phone and go boink, and stick it up onto a metal cabinet or a rail or whatever uh, and the magnets that were in those rock form cases were just crazy strong and they were uh, rubber backed so they, they gave them extra grip so it's pretty neat so i'm anxious to see how these uh new uh, quad lock mag cases work out uh, they're supposed to be compatible with the rest of the quad lock system uh, but for automotive mount and like desk mount you have to have the the mag base coming over dude um, so in order to use the magnet function you've got to have uh, something metal for it to stick to But aside from using the magnet, you, you know, it's the normal twist to lock kind of a deal. Kind of cool. Let's see if I can get out there without uh, getting squished. I ain't asking, I'm coming over. Got my signal on, I'm trying to be nice, but you know, nice only goes so far. I noticed that the flat profile on the rear tire is making the front end feel more squirrely over uh, pavement irregularities. It kind of tries to steer and bobble the, the front end of the bike around a little bit. It's weird.
Wild West, here we are. Oh, got some new Can-Ams out here, nice. All right, I'll put this where they can move it wherever they would prefer. And uh, hand over the key, write up the service ticket, and figure out how I'm going to get home. Probably going to be uh, doing the 511 Express, walking home three miles, four miles. I don't know. I guess I could do a uh, Uber, pay some money. I could use the exercise. Fat ass. <laughs> oh, the new electric one. Cool. That deserves a picture all on its own. Got to back up far enough and I got a backpack on. Got it? Sold, sold, sold. Oh, that's a cute little bike. F800. I like that. Ooh, looks like it's got the low seat option. Might fit my short stubby legs. Yeah, well, I'm not in the market to buy that, but I did want to show you around. Look at this. They got a whole showroom full of mini motos here at Wild West. Grom, 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 23, 23, 23. They got MSRP stickers on them. They're not gouging there. You like a lot of dealers do. Uh, they got several navvies over here. They've got, what, three red, two of the lime. Uh, they got a bunch of mini motos on the floor. And a whole squad of uh, upcoming uh, dirt bikers. <laughs> Little P-dubs. I love these. I had one of these. Cool. Bikes, bikes, bikes. And they even have a uh, 19 Super Cub. Did you find it in the yeah. system? Oh, there you go. You helmet on. I didn't see. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a, it's got 535 miles. They're asking 39.99. 39.99 for a 535 mile 2019 commemorative color cub. Nice. Not bad at all. Price is a little high, but you know, pretty much brand new. Nice bike. The guy that owned it was his little garage candy. He had that. Uh huh. Um, yeah. I think he traded in and got a monkey. That's pretty cool. Oh, no, actually, no, he traded this and a monkey in and got a trail 125. Oh, there you go. Well, I hope he got some money out of that deal because the, the trail's not worth that much money. <laughs> no, they're hard to get too, though. But yeah, they are. I could scalp mine for way more than I paid for it. Yeah. Cool.